going to speak to you here about power and a little bit at the end about efficiency. But the very first thing I want to do is to tell you about, uh, well, a general definition of power. Now the power is, let's just say here, uh, so the power is the rate at which energy is transferred. This is the key sort of thing here. So we have energy that's transferred and it's a rate. Now what a rate means, that means some sort of something over time. So what I want to show you then is first of all, uh, let's just define uh, well, how we do it. So we do P equals power and we use capital P and we measure it in units called watts or we can use joules per second. Turns out we can also say joules per second. So we use a capital P and this is a scalar. So uh, let's maybe look at an equation for it instead. So we're going to say P equals, now energy is transferred. We've learned about this before. We have, um, so we can say it's the energy transferred. But now when we say a rate, what we mean by that is it's something per time. So in this case, it's the energy transferred over time. This has a time element to it. And notice that's why the units are joules per second, because this is measured in joules, that's what energy is, over time, which is in seconds. But because of the work energy theorem, we can also say that it's the work done over time. It's the same thing. So this is the main equation right here. This is it. Keep in mind, power is a scalar, so it's just a number. Okay, we just say like the power is this many watts. Now, um, so you can either say watts or joules per second, but the most common unit to use is watt. I know this sounds really lame, but I would always ask my student, what's the unit for power? And they'd be wondering why I'm laughing and smiling, and that's just because obviously it's watt. So what's the unit? It's watts. We use a capital P, and that's how we write it. So that's all there is to power. Now let's take a look maybe at an example because it turns out, although this is a very simple equation, it comes in to save the day in all sorts of really strange looking examples. You can have this stuff showing up all over the place to help you out. So I mean we use this in astrophysics, we use this in electronics uh, when we're looking at electric circuits and voltages and currents. Turns out that power can also be written as that. So it turns out power can also be uh, the potential difference times the current. Some people call this the voltage. Technically it's still a potential difference. But power is VI. And it turns out that power is the same as this. So I mean just so you know at least we also have power equals V times I. Where V is the uh, well, potential difference or voltage. Some people like to call it a voltage but uh, and that's measured in volts. And I that's the current and that's measured in amperes. Some people call them amps. So anyway, this is actually the same thing as this. So it turns out sometimes that really helps to solve complicated uh, problems. So let's take a look at a simple one though. So what's the power needed for an elevator that lifts this much mass from a height of 12 meters to a height of 98 meters in five minutes? This may look really complicated. See what we're doing, we're taking this, this sort of mass here, this 500 kilograms, and we're raising it, so we have a height right now of uh, 12 meters at first, and this thing goes up to a height of 98 meters. So how do we deal with this? Well, we can use this equation for power. Power is energy over time, which is the work done over time. Now if you look at this though, all we have is just this thing, this mass that goes up some certain height. So that means in this case we can consider the work done or we could even consider the energy. Both ways work because it turns out they give you the same answer. The energy that you could say, well it goes from a certain height to a certain height. So you consider, you can consider that energy being, um, well let's use just the energy over time. You know what I'm going to do actually? I'm going to erase the work done over time just to show you that they're actually going to be the same thing. We're going to do it separately. We're going to do power equals work done over time. I think this will look better if I just separate them.
So let's do it with energy here. So energy. In this case, it's going to be potential energy because it goes from a certain height to a certain height. So I'm going to say it's m times g times h. Well, in this case, I better be careful. It's not just an h. It's a delta h. It's a change in height. I go from a certain height to a certain height. Or I can consider, you know, the height it's gone up. So I'm going to have to deal with that. I'm going to say mg delta h. And I'm going to divide that by the time, which is, in this case right here, five minutes. So I should be very, very careful with uh, what I actually write down here. So let's keep in mind a couple of things here. Now, first of all, um, I'm going to have to consider um, what the change in height, actually. I'm going to need to know this value right here. So to do that, well, I can just say 98 minus 12. Um, and so that will be, what's that, an 86. So I'm going to say then it's going to be 500, because that's the mass of the object, times 9.81 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. That's g. Times, well, 98 minus 12 is 86. And there I'm going to have to divide by the time. So do I just put in a time of 5 minutes? So I just, do I just put in a 5 here? I hope that some alarm bells are ringing in your head. Because no, you can't just say five minutes. That's because that's not an SI unit. The only things that can go in this are regular units. So kilograms, meters, and in this case, seconds. So five minutes is the same thing as, well, let's see, there's uh, 60 seconds in one minute. We have five of those minutes. So five times 60, let's see, five times six is three, and it add uh, two zeros to it. So in that case, that'll be 300 seconds. That's really important, I think, is this one right here. 300 seconds. Well, then we're going to have our answer of power. Let's see. We just get out our trusted calculator. And I'm going to consider that. So here we go. I'm going to say it is, well, I better just clear this. Clear that. There we go. So I'll say 500 times 9.81 times 86, I'm going to take that answer and divide it by 300. I end up with an answer of, well, 1,406 watts. Okay, so 1,406. Now, of course, I just want to write it with two numbers, so I'm going to say, uh, well, I guess all I can do is use two, yeah. So in that case right there, then I can just say it's, what was it again? It was, whoops, there we go. So it was uh, 500 times 9.81 times 86, all that divided by 300, and that gave me this value right here. So that means then that I'm okay here, and what I can do then is just figure out, well, in watts at least, that'll be 1.4 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. So it'll be 1.4 times 10 to the 3. So then let me just consider that one there. So I'll go like this. So then I'll say that is... 1.4 times 10 to the 3 watts, or, you know, 1,400 watts. Or you could say it's 1.4 kilowatts. There's lots of ways of writing this. It's approximately that. That's the answer. That's how much power you need in order to do this. And then you might say, oh, well, how, if the voltage is this, what's the current in it? And that's how you could easily link it, because once you know that power, that's the same as VI. So in that case, then, if you want to know, I don't know, if you're given the voltage and you wanted to know the current, then this number right here would equal, you know, the voltage times the current. So then you could solve for whichever. I would just want to show you how the work done is actually the same thing. Remember the equation for work. Work is F times S times cos theta. So here we have an applied force, which is upwards, and we have a displacement, which is upwards, which means the angle between these two is zero. So that means cosine of zero is actually one. So that just means it becomes applied force times displacement. Okay, what's the applied force? Well, I can use Newton's laws because F equals ma. You know, Newton's law says that. Applied force is going to be the mass of this object times the acceleration due to gravity. So in this case, it's going to be m times g, because that's what m times a is. In this case right here, it's, it's going to be mg. So I multiply m times g times my displacement, which is, in this case, my height. All that divided by time. Do you see how you get the same thing? So mg delta h over time. Hey, look, we get the exact same thing. Turns out, if you, I mean, there's no sense calculating it, because it's the same numbers. 
So we get then the power is approximately 1.4 times 10 to the 3 watts. So do you notice, that's why, I mean, the energy transferred is the same as the work done. Look at this example right here. See how, even though it may look more complicated at first to find the work done, turns out it gives you the same result, same exact numbers being multiplied together, divided by 300, will still give you the same answer. I think that's pretty neat. So that's how we can deal with, uh, with power. So what I would like to do is, uh, in the next video, I'm just going to show you something about horsepower. It's a little bit fun. And after that, we're going to look at efficiency.